Hi, my name is Mac. Today I'm going to be showing you the ion thruster that I've created here. As you can see, it's very small scale and does not produce a significant amount of thrust. And actually I had to tape this piece of tissue paper off the end just to show that it's on. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see here, this is the flyback transformer which steps up the input voltage to about 50 kilovolts. Now it goes through wires obviously. Now this anode tip here, which is copper, will ionize the air around it negatively and then it will be attracted through this cathode chamber, which is just a copper tubing about three, three and a half inches in diameter. Um, you can see there's an electrostatically charged grid on the end just to help accelerate the ions. And then I also have an oppositely charged um, grid here which helps to neutralize the ions and also um, create more thrust. So this is the control box that I made in order to properly control the ignition of the ion thruster. As you can see, a simple on-off toggle switch here, an indicator light, and then just some safety labels around. Now these output cables here are coming from the fluorescent light ballast, which I'll show you in a second. And as you can see on this side, I have three prong input for 120 volts AC, and through the ballast outputs it to about 277 volts AC. So this is the inside of the control box that I made. As you can see, it's a pretty simple design. Uh, we have the input from the wall over here, the hot and neutral wires going to the switch, uh, which would then power the light and the ballast when it is turned on. I also have ground from the wall. You can see the green wire back there. Uh, it's connected to the screw which grounds the case and the case of the ballast as well. And as you can see here, I just taped off the yellow and red wires that I'm not using. Um, and then you can see the yellow and blue wires coming out here, which then connect to the flyback transformer. So this is where the flyback transformer sits, submerged in... Uh, vegetable oil actually. Um, you can see the two terminals on the top are for the outputs, or well they're the inputs but they're from the output of the control box which connect to the flyback transformer. Now this is a flyback transformer one that I was actually using earlier which actually broke down because I let it arc for too long. As you can see on the bottom of a flyback transformer you have about 10 pins. Now, the problem with using these is you have to identify which pins are the primary coil and which one corresponds to the high voltage ground. Um, so the way you would do that is basically use a multimeter and read the resistances between uh, any two pins on here. And the ones that correspond closest to about one ohm are most likely going to be your primary coil. On most of them, and including this one, uh, these are your primary coil inputs down here. As you can see, I've soldered two wires to it. It doesn't really matter which one is uh, hot or, ne or uh, neutral going into it. Now, this is obviously your high voltage out, the big thick cable out coming off the top. To find your high voltage ground, um, there's basically you'd basically do the same way. Um, send some kind of um, small electri electrical circuit uh, signal through the transformer in reverse and read which one of these pins would be at zero. On most of the uh, flyback transformers, the ground is going to be this one right here. Uh, the top right, I guess. Now, as I found on this flyback transformer and a couple others actually, is um, some of them are actually required to have um, certain pins connected together in order for, for it to work. Now, in order to figure that out, 
what I did was I submerged it in oil with the primary um, input here and the ground and the high voltage and I tested it like that because the oil would properly insulate all of the pins and stop them from arcing. Now the results I got were less than significant. So what I had to do was take it out and try it again and I noticed that these two pins were actually arcing together when the high voltage would arc. And that's when I soldered them together and the results I was getting after that were much better. So this is where I pulled the flyback transformer out of. It's actually um, a motherboard from an old TV. Um, as you can see it's broken but right here is where the flyback transformer sat and I was able to desolder it from this side basically using a soldering gun and um, a solder sucker uh, you can use whatever way you want I just wanted to keep the pins intact so that I could use them up. So as I said earlier the uh, cathode chamber here is basically just copper tubing which is about three, uh, actually I think it's three and a half inches in diameter. I was able to pick one up from an old uh, metal recycling plant at just the cost of copper. And I cut it with a hacksaw. Not very clean because I don't have very good tools, but it seemed to do the job. So this is what it looks like all together. As you can see, I have the control box. Um, you can't really see it in this shot, but we've got the yellow cable attaching to one of the input terminals for the flyback, and then the two blues connecting to the other one. And basically, I'll show you what it looks like when it's running. So, I'll just flick on the on switch. So, as you can see, what's happening here is the anode is ionizing the air and it's being attracted through the cathode chamber through the grid on the end and then be neutralized by this grid and it's producing not very much but a little bit of thrust um, obviously at a small scale like this the thrust produced wouldn't be that significant anyway